In this video, we will look at how changes in vision and higher level processing affect driving ability. In this series, we are exploring what happens to the eye and vision as we age. In earlier videos, we looked at vision changes with age and structural changes in the various parts of the eye. In this video, we will look at how changes in vision and higher level processing affect driving. Driving is not a simple task. In traffic, there are multiple things happening. Cars coming from different directions, mixed with pedestrians from another set of directions, neither of which are necessarily behaving in an orderly way. Merging onto a freeway, there are multiple vehicles moving fast and in different directions. Light conditions vary greatly. As we discussed in the vision and aging video, vision in all its dimensions decreases with time. Acuity, contrast sensitivity, ability to adapt to darkness, and more. Visual acuity, as measured on a standard vision chart, is the test we are most familiar with. It uses high contrast letters usually presented in a dimly lit room. Even if the chart images were more practical, the testing situation is still quite artificial. Driving does not involve nice, clean, high contrast targets in perfect bright light conditions without glare and without distractions. As we saw in the first video, acuity, as measured on the vision chart, changes over time. In most states, visual acuity is the only measure used to screen vision for driving, and standards vary considerably by state. Acuity best predicts ability to read road signs, but crash statistics show that visual acuity has a very weak relationship with motor vehicle crashes. Contrast sensitivity is the ability to distinguish objects from their background. It is a more sensitive measure of the quality of vision and as such is often used in research studies on vision. But it is not used as a motor vehicle's vision test. Contrast sensitivity also decreases over time, at least partly because of cataract development. The effect of glare and recovery from glare is important in driving. There are two categories of glare. One is annoyance glare, in which you are bothered by the bright light, but it doesn't necessarily decrease vision. The other kind is where bright light hits a cloudy lens, a cataract, and diffuses, causing reduced vision. This graph shows how lower contrast sensitivity and glare combine to reduce vision. It looks relatively innocent with a gentle downslope until you notice the vision levels on the scale on the left. The average starts near 2080 and ends at 2200, the standard for legal blindness. The other end of the glare effect is how long it takes to recover. Note how much longer glare recovery becomes with age. One study has shown that cataract removal improved both acuity and contrast sensitivity and reduced the accident rate by 50% compared to an age-matched group who did not have cataract surgery. Field of vision measures how far off to the sides you can see. We have tools to measure both how far peripheral vision extends and the sensitivity of vision at grid points across the field. We can measure that there is a decrease in sensitivity over all points in the visual field with age. And we can measure missing, missing areas in vision caused by things like glaucoma and stroke. Imagine the challenge of driving with half of your vision missing. Though some drivers in this situation are able to adapt and drive safely by frequently scanning from side to side. Moving on from basic measures of vision, let's look at higher level processing of information. Returning to visual field, Approaching it functionally can be done by measuring what is called useful field of view. This estimates how well a driver can pay attention to an object in central vision while noting new and changing events in peripheral vision. A specific research protocol has been devised to measure this and we will return to that again in our conclusions. In measuring higher level functions it is also possible to test a person's ability to perceive both direction 
and motion sense. This study of direction sense compares error rate versus exposure time tested for different age groups. Note two things. Before age 70, accuracy of direction sense is essentially indistinguishable. But after age 70, the error rate shows a clear separation. Ability to detect motion is also important. Like direction sense, sensitivity to motion is essentially indistinguishable through age 70. After age 70, there is a clear drop in sensitivity. Now, let us see if we can correlate the visual functions we talked about and driving situations that carry higher risk. These are covered in more detail in the next video on crash statistics. The first high-risk situation is making a left turn through oncoming traffic. The second high-risk situation is matching traffic speed in merging and changing lanes. The difficulty in turning has to do with judging when there is enough space so it is safe to turn. That requires the ability to accurately judge the speed and direction of oncoming traffic. Likewise, merging and lane change requires the ability to match speed and direction. As we have seen, th that ability to determine direction and speed both decline significantly after age 70. Now, let us ask how well the parameters of vision we can test are able to predict driver safety. This study looked at multiple parameters of vision, including acuity, contrast sensitivity, peripheral vision, useful field of view, mental status, and age, and asked the key question, which were best able to predict crash involvement? This article has some complicated statistics, but results reduce to this graph, which is a bit different from the ones we have seen f so far. It is an ROC curve. Don't worry about the details. The general idea is to test the ability of different parameters to predict a given outcome. For example, how does visual acuity correlate with crash involvement? The yellow line represents 50-50. That is, the measured quantity has no ability to predict the outcome more than a coin toss. Acuity, the thing we measure most often, is near the 50-50 line, showing very little association with crashes. Contrast sensitivity has a little more, but still not much correlation. Peripheral vision loss is still in the same group, as are mental status and age. Of all the things that could be measured, the one with clearly the most association is useful field of view. You might say that this was an unusual graph. Is there another way of looking at this to confirm that thought? The same article also presents the data this way. The bottom line is percent reduction in useful field of view. The vertical line is crash frequency. You can clearly see how, as the useful field of view decreases, the crash frequency increases significantly. There is one more interesting way of looking at this. That is by age group. The baseline here is age group starting at age 55. The vertical line represents crash frequency. Reduction of useful field of view within each age group is shown by the colored bars. Notice how the crash frequency is dependent on useful field of view and essentially independent of age. How interesting. The drawbacks of UFOV are it is a more involved measurement, so it is less practical, and the test, though it can be run on a PC, is proprietary. The next and last video in this series summarizes crash statistics and risky driver behavior, including both teenage and senior drivers. Here are selected references if you want to read about these things in more detail.